When I was diagnosed with TB, I was working as a medical officer in pediatrics. It is occupational disease in South Africa, as doctors have a three times increased risk of getting TB and up to six times increased risk of getting drug-resistant TB because we are exposed to it on a daily basis. I contracted what's called MDR-TB, which stands for multi-drug-resistant TB. I had gone on a standard four-drug TB regimen for about two months and it was only after two months that we had picked up that it was XDR-TB. I picked up complications uh, as allergies to the drugs available, which are very toxic to humans, uh, though it kills the bacillus of TB. I developed bleeding skin lesions as an allergy to the drug. I developed inflammation of my liver. We suspected that there was TB in the valves of my heart. They weren't also good enough screening tools for us to assess this adequately. And so I had a chemotherapy cath catheter inserted just above my heart to receive IV medication. And that subsequently became septic. So my treatment lasted three years, one week and a day. And before I concluded treatment, I began my interest with TB research and with the science behind TB. You would look at any other disease, uh, whether it's cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and say, gee, if, if we were working with the same things that we had available 50 years ago or 100 years ago, would that be acceptable to, to anybody? But that's the situation in tuberculosis in terms of the diagnostics and the drugs that we're actually using. The mission of the critical path to TB drug regimens is really very straightforward, although not easy to bring forward an entirely novel regimen to treat TB patients, one that is shorter in duration and much more tolerable. Really important to partner with a brand new diagnostic that helps us understand when that new regimen needs to be deployed for patients in need. The TB PACS Clinical Aggregation Trial Platform is a partnership with the Critical Path Institute and the World Health Organization TDR Research Unit to make available three large phase three clinical trials, all of which contained quinolones as part of the drug regimens. There were essentially three big clinical trials that try to shorten the treatment of tuberculosis without succeeding. But once you put all these data together, you get a much higher statistical power that would allow us to understand how much we can shorten the drug regimens and in what way we can measure the way this uh, process is in the clinical trials themselves. These three trials represent almost 4,600 patients worth of data, decades to run these experiments, and tens of millions of dollars in research investment. In March of this year, the TB BACS program, the Data Collaboration Center, went live. These three aggregated data sets were made available to qualified researchers. Since that time, 23 different research institutions have applied for access, and to date, 16 different research organizations are driving unique research that was only made possible through these, the use and access of these aggregated data sets. If you're interested in contributing your data to TB PACS for broader public accessibility, I would be happy to talk to you about how this can be accomplished, how we will protect your data, and how I think it might elevate the work that you've already done. We basically contribute anything that we have that could be useful to the fight against TB. This first of all includes the use of any drugs that we're developing to be used together with the drugs of any other sponsor, be they pharmaceutical companies, biotech companies, even other not-for-profits. So we contribute not only the willingness, but the leadership in terms of providing a common platform to put these drugs together, to test them together preclinically before they even are ready to be put into patients. The second major data sharing initiative that we spoke to you about at last union's meeting was the Relational Sequencing TB Data Sharing Platform commonly known in the TB community now as Resect TB. The vision for this program was to better understand resistance potential across the globe by bringing together comprehensive whole genome sequencing data, robust phenotypic data, and patient outcome data related to those isolates wherever and whenever possible. This is a really critical endeavor if we hope to drive the development of new diagnostics and drug susceptibility tests to support TB patients, their diagnosis, and appropriate therapy. It's really important if we want to understand trends across the globe for global resistance. 
and this is really going to drive, in many ways, clinical decision-making in the future. A RSEC-TB database that allows us to compare different strains around the world, understanding their genetic mutations, right? If we have a situation like this, then uh, we will be able to have drug susceptibility testing much more efficient than what it is today. As a result, we will have then the possibility of detecting immediately that presence of resistance to one or two or three drugs and redesign the regimens, not only using the old drugs, but perhaps redesigning regimens using new drugs and knowing exactly the type of bacillus we are dealing with. In order to really make an impact in the field, we do need to understand how to treat an individual. What Resect TB is just at the forefront of the genomic revolution, where we're starting to have personalized medicine being available to a group of disenfranchised individuals who are infected with tuberculosis, the opportunity to have a personalized medical treatment available to them. The Critical Path to TB Drug Regimens was launched almost 10 years ago with a sole focus and purpose on bringing forward better therapies for patients still living with TB disease. We want to do this much more quickly than we've attempted in the past. We want these therapies to be shorter in duration, clearly faster acting, and safer, more tolerable for those who have to be on these regimens. These data collaboration center initiatives are critically important because it's bringing together all of those lessons learned, the investments from all of our funders, from all of your research institutions, all of your hard work. There's a lot of information to be gleaned from the data that already sit in our shops. Please consider contributing to these data platforms and helping us to reach this mission collectively. You won't be in it alone. We have a large team of partners ready to help elevate the work that you've done and to bring it into collective with these other data sets. TB can really affect anybody. TB doesn't respect borders. And if we don't share this data in order to save people's lives, in the end we will all suffer. We need to work together to end TB.